Okay, so now I will be talking about something called lambda functions. We have talked about functions before, but what is a lambda function? Well, usually we would define a function like this. We would say diff. Let's say the function is called x. And then we will be passing some parameters to it. And then here we have some logic, right? And maybe a return value. So this is what a usual normal function is. Now, a lambda function can be initialized as follows. You would say lambda, and then you need to give an argument or the parameter, and then you would give the expression. Okay, so what does this mean? Argument correspond to the parameters here we are passing to the function. And an expression is actually whatever we write right here. We don't need to do the diff. We don't need to. We can create this within our program, our main program maybe. What do I mean by that? Let us take an example. If I simply create a variable here called x. And let's say that x will be holding a lambda function. So here I would be saying lambda. We, as we said, we need lambda, argument, and expression. Okay, let's say we are passing x to this lambda function. Now it's time to say the expression. What would we like to do with this x? Well, maybe I want to return x divided by 10. Okay. Now, simply if I say print x 100 or 50. Okay, now if I run this, you'll see that I got 5. So this is a lambda expression. The equivalent way to do that is just by saying, hey, define, let's say, xx instead of x. And here we will be passing a parameter to it, and then we will be saying return parameter divided by 10. Okay, so now if I pass xx here, I will be getting the same result. So this is a normal function, and this is a lambda function. You might ask, why is this useful? It will be useful when we are talking about maps, when we are talking about filters, sometimes in list comprehensions, because lambda is one of the important features in Python and it's important to learn it. So let's dig into some more examples. Okay, so right now we will be talking about maps and filters which come hand in hand with lambda functions. So lambda filters or filter function and map function all right we have talked about lambda now what is filter filter is actually a function that takes the following it takes a function as an argument and it takes a list and it is going to filter this list according to some criteria and according to the rules of the functions we are providing. What do I mean by that? Usually, let's say that you have a list and it contains uh, characters. Some of them are empty and some of them contains letters maybe. And let's say you would like to get rid of all the empty entries right here. See, this is an empty string that we don't need. And this happens a lot, actually, when you work with text processing. So how would we filter this? We could use for loops, right, to iterate over this list, check if there's an empty entry in the list. This could be done, but we can do this, actually, in a way more simple way using lambda and filters. So since filter takes a function, it only makes sense to use lambda function instead of writing a separate function right so maybe we would write a rule like lambda and we pass an argument to it and we say x does not equal to an empty list okay we've talked about lambda that it takes an argument and an expression right 
So we're saying here that, hey, I have a lambda expression and any entry in this list should not be empty, right? Now, let's say this list is maybe called uh, L. So here I would be passing L. And this will be my filter function. As you can see, it took a function and it took a list. Now, this is for filter. What about map? Well, map takes the same thing. It takes a function and it takes a list. And it only makes sense that this function would be a lambda. Right? Now, map will work on all the elements of your list. See, right here, we were only working on the elements that meets a certain condition, right? So we are filtering out some elements, we are throwing out some elements, we are keeping in some elements depending on this condition. But with map, we will be working on all the elements equally. So what do I mean by that? Let's say that I have a list that is equal to numbers 2, 4, 6 maybe. And let's say that I will write a lambda expression that will multiply everything by 2. Okay, just as an example. So this will be x, x times 2. Okay, this is my expression. Now I can pass a list here, which is my L. And I can say, hey, map. So we will be iterating over all the elements and multiplying them by 2 according to my lambda function right here. See? There is tons of applications for maps and filters, which when you are implementing your project, it will only make sense that you replace your for loops with those functions. So we have talked about list comprehension before, which was compressing a for loop if you want to work with lists. Same thing for maps. It is about mapping. If you have a certain array, you can change the whole elements of that array using a lambda function without using for loops. We have talked about filters, which is about filtering out your list according to a certain condition without resolving to for loops. So let us code some examples now. All right. Let us now code some filters. I'm going to create a list of letters, let's say A, B, C, and I will be having some empty strings, okay? Just like this. Let's use filters. So I'm going to say here, filtered list is equal to, what we want to do is call the function filter, and let's have a lambda x we will pass it an x parameter and we are going to say x so we are going to append to that filtered list all the elements of l only when x does not equal to an empty string okay now remember filter takes a function which is the lambda function and it takes a list to filter it so it is the l now let's try to print filtered list and let's run it. We will see that we got filter object. Why did we get that? Well, because what filter returns here is just the address. If you want to convert this to a list, you need to encapsulate it in and cast it into a list. Okay? So right now, after we cast it and we print, we will see that we got ABC without all the spaces. So this is how a lambda function works. Now, let us append uh, the letter, let's say, maybe x to all the entries of this list. If we want to modify everything in a list, we use map function. So we're going to say append list. This is, as, this is my new list. It will be map and, again, lambda. We will pass it an x parameter. And we will say x plus 
let's append the letter D. Okay, let's not append X, let's append D. And then we need to pass it a list, which is L. Now let us print this append list. And we, again, we will be getting map object at a certain address. So again, we need to cast this to a list and print. You'll see that now all the entries of the list are appended the D letter. All right. So this is how map and filter works. And as I said, whenever you are programming in Python, you're going to have scenarios where you will be using for loops. So try to think about it. Can you make a shortcut by converting it to a filter, to a map, or to a list comprehension? Always take this into consideration because this is the Pythonic way of using for loops, okay? And the regular for loops are not really the Pythonic way. Sometimes it's important to use for loops in some scenarios, but sometimes we can really take a shortcut and resolve to these techniques that we have learned.